All right, it's hands-on challenge time. So we are going to do the challenge together for the get started with Apex unit tests. So here is the challenge. Create a unit test for a simple Apex class, a simple one. So install a simple Apex class, write unit tests that achieve 100% code coverage, okay? So we have to aim for 100% no less. And then run your Apex test. All right, let's go. So the Apex test or the Apex class to test is called verify date and the code is available here. I'm gonna pop this up. So this is the code verify date okay so let me copy this and you can do um, the same thing as I go so I'm gonna go to my playground let me just close this you know how to go to your playground right so I'm just gonna go to your playground click here your icon hands on orgs and then you go to your playground and boom I'm going to launch my developer console I'm done with this I'm gonna close this out <clears throat> gear icon and then developer console all right come on come on let's go so let's see we have a class which which check the date between one date and the second one okay so this is popping up already let's go to our developer console and pop this up boom Okay, this is the previous classes and task classes we did before. Let's close all of that. So file, new, Apex class. What's the name of the class again? Let's flip back to our code here. It's called verify date. I'm going to copy that, all right? Put, it that, put that here, verify date. We have a blank shell of a class. Now let's copy the rest of the code. Go raw here. Command A or Control A. Copy. And then flip back here. Boom. All right. Now we should be able to save it. Now the start is here. Let's make sure the start is gone when you're saving. Ah, it's finally saved now. All right, now let's talk about it more. Okay, so we have, as you see, three methods. This is the first one. This is the second method and the last one. So method to handle potential checks against two dates. So this method, check dates, is accepting two input parameters date one which is the data type of date and date two which is the data type of date as well okay so once you pass the two dates is going to check is the date within 30 days if date within 30 days of date one and date two return date two so this is actually calling the method below see it's the same one date within 30 days is calling this method which is passing the date from the the input from the class is passing to this method again okay so it's it's basically running this code here and calculating it so if date 2 is less than date 1 return false that's the first validation the second validation, so you add date 1, add 30 days to date 1, okay, day, date 30 days variable is a new variable, data type is date, and basically what it's doing is just adding 30 days to the date 1 variable. So if after add 
30 days, day 2 it's still greater, it's still greater than than day 30 days, return false. Otherwise, return to true. Okay? So, this is the first method that is running. If date within 30 days, you pass the date 1 and day 2, return day 2. Right? So, if that day 2 is within the next 30 days of date 1, use day 2. Otherwise, use the end of the month. So, otherwise, check this or run this. Return the end of the month. This is also a method set end of the month date of date 1. This is a, a simple one. So, you, you just pass the date 1 as a parameter and then so, this is a new variable, which is an integer, total days. So, it's checking days in month of the year of date 1 and the month of date 1. How many days in that month from the date 1 date, basically, okay? So, the last day of that date, okay? So, date, new instance, create a new instance of a date... Uh, of a date class and then basically you put the year which from the date one the month from the date one and the total days in that month so if I go calendar here okay so January we're in February now right so February total days this particular part here the days in month of 2020, right? The month of February. How many days in month in February 2020? <gasps> it's a leap year. We have 29 days. Special year this year, guys. 29 days in February. All right? So, the total days would be 29. So, create a new instance. 2020, the month is 2, which is February, and the total days is 29. So, return February 29th. That's basically what it's doing. Are you, are you confused still? Okay, let's just do some example. If you are still confused, after the example, we should be good, alright? So, now, let's create a verify test date. Go back to my trail here. Shake it off. If you're a bit confused, shake it off, shake it off, just move on, okay? Now, we are asked to create a test verify date class, all right? So I'm going to copy this guy, copy that guy, test verify date. Back to my developer console, okay? Now make a new class, file, new, Apex class. The name of the class is Test verify date. And hit OK. And first things first, I am going to declare it's a test. Now, if I save this guy, you will see a button appear here. Boom! Haha! -ha. A button appear. You can run a test because this is a test method. Okay? So, let's do some testing. So I'm going to refer back to our playground examples. So we are not creating it from scratch from my head, which might be different from what we are learning here. Okay. So let's test, for example, this one. Okay. It's a simple one. We just create a method and then try it out. Okay. So, let's just copy this. Let's just copy this. Copy that. Alright. So, we are in sync with what we are learning here in this trail. Boom. Is task static void? I'm going to change, change this to the actual um, verify date. I'm going to check date. Um, let's name it. If day 2 is within the next 30 days of date 1, okay, use date 2. 
if date 2 is within the next 30 days of date 1. Okay, so I'm just going to name this date 2 within 30 days date 1. Whatever, you can name it whatever you want, right? And then this would be, let's see, what is, what is it returning? Returning set end of month date. So it's actually returning a date, okay? It's returning a date data type, right? Return this, return date. This is a date data type. So I'm going to go back here. So it's a date data type. It's a date. Okay. Um, let's name it return date. Whatever, right? The date that will be returned. Okay. So we are going to call the class verify date. So let's just scrap this. Okay, verify date, the name of the class, you, you hit a dot and then you say the method. What is the method? Check dates here. This is the method we are going to run, right? Check dates. And then you need to pass date one and date two. So we want to pass two dates. The first one, it's today, or you can actually define a date instead just instead of using, you can also do this today function. And then the next one is today plus how many days, right? But let's just pass it using a function date. Oops, let me just close this first date dot value of and then you can actually type the date here okay today is 2020 february oh happy valentine's day dude happy valentine's day do you have a special one when everybody is special say happy valentine's day to everybody that you love all right so date value of today's Valentine's Day. Imagine that mm, chocolate, flowers, hugs, and kisses. Okay, enough about Valentine's Day. Date value of today, and then we want to return. We want to we want to check the first one, which is a good one. So if date is within the next thirty days within the next 30 days okay so we want to pass the days that's within 30 days oh i flipped to the wrong one so date value of well just at 24 february okay 2020 zero 02 which is february and 24th this is just 10 days right is this right right so this is 10 days, February 14th plus 10 is 24. It's just 10 days. So this would be good. This would be awesome. This would run this method. So return day two. Day two has to be returned because the date is within 30 days. Let me ask you, is February 24 within 30 days of February 14th, it is, right? February 24th is within 30 days of February 14th, all right? So this should return true. We can assert that, okay? This is return date, let's name it return date one. Return date one, whoops, whoo, what happened there? Copy this guy, dude. Return date one, has to return day two, which is the the second date we are passing, which is this. So it has to return this value here, right? So we are passing two dates. What should be returned is this, okay? Let me type it out.
this should return February 24, 2020, which is day two, because, right, February 24, 2020 is within 30 days of February 14, 2020. You got that? So let me just go back like that. Boom. All right. So this should return February 24. This should return February 24, the second date here, because February 14 is within 30 days of February. Of February. Because February 24 is within 30 days of February 14. Okay. My head is spinning to do the next method. <laughs> okay. Let's do the next one. Let's just do copy here. And then we change things up. Okay. So the second which we want to test is when it is actually more than. So we want to to set the, the, uh, the end of month. Okay. Which is an awesome leap, leap year for February. This is a good example. Good timing. Hey. So if I go back here, I go boom. So day two, not within 30 day of date one. Let's just name it like that, okay? So this is return day two. This is the second method test. Verify the date, check dates. Now the date is March. Boom. Okay? First date is still February 14th, which is today. But the second day, the second date you pass, the second parameter you pass for your test is already in March 24, right? If it's March 24, is it within 30 days? No, no, no siree, okay? So it should return the end of February, which is February 29, okay? Let me bring up my calendar for you. Make sure you got this thing, dude. So, today is February 14th, right? Now, the second date we pass here, the second date we are passing here is March 24, which is March 24 here. Is March 24 within 30 days of February 14? No, it is not. 30 days from February 14 is probably like March... 14 or 15 around that part, but we are passing March 24. So it's not if it's not what do we want to have? What is the right answer? The end of February, which is the 29th here. This is the right answer. So if you pass this kind of Scenario, I want to have February 29 from return date to Date value of 2020 229 return day 2 right so what's the problem dude variable does not exist return date 1 where what line? oh yes it's gone now it's trying to fool me <laughs> it's gone i was just trying to check it now i'm going to save this guy okay so enough said about the date so uh, if you're still confused just replay this video, all right? Replay this video five times, I don't know. It's basically checking the dates, okay? So this should return February 29 because March 24, this is March 24, right? Because March 24 is not within 30 days. So it should return the end of the month of February date. So it should return 2020 to 29, okay? Let me just save this guy. And then let's just run the test. It should cover every line of code of here because we passed two possible scenarios. Where first, where it's returning the, the second date, right? And then where it's returning the actual end of the month of date one. Got that? So if I go back here, okay, if you're still confused, you 
are having ideas on pausing this video, right? And just start typing what you see on your screen. That's not good. That's not the point of I'm making this video. I want you to understand. Okay, I want you to understand, not just pass the challenge. That would just be what you don't get to help people. If you just pass the challenge, well, passing the challenge is good, but you have to understand how the task works, how this uh, the, the date function works. Okay, so make sure you understand. Replay the video a few times if you need to, but this is going to pass the actual line by line. Let's run it. Run the test. Boom, now where do you have to go? Do you even remember? Go to the test and then you click on here, boom, you click on there, boom, and all pass, but we want 100%. Is it 100%? That's, woohoo, 100%, what do you know? It's all blue because we pass all the possible methods that can be done here okay again i want to stress that i want you to understand how things works therefore you can create your own stuff this is really basic but then you can just play around you know i'm just hand, uh, telling you how to put lego pieces together so you stick this and this it it becomes something else now you can just do with just go with it and and play your own lego okay construct your own thinking construct your own test you can do this many different ways right i'm just sticking with what the trail hat is showing us so you're not suddenly seeing what is jimmy doing is totally different from this but you can do things totally different it still works okay so uh, have your own logic have your own stuff but that's how we do it on this challenge and we are just going to grab our 500 points and I will see you on the next section, which is um, test apex triggers. Sounds familiar. <laughs> is that what we're doing right now? But let's do it again. Yeah, you have to do things over and over and over and over and over again before you actually get it in your mind and it sticks in your mind, in your brain. You know how to do stuff because if you just do it once, it's impossible to remember even, right? You have to do this kind of thing many, 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 many times. Then you get, oh, I get it. So if you don't really get it right now, it's okay. It takes a person like 50 times maybe. You're doing this 50 times. Then you start thinking to get it. Oh, now you don't have to even think. You just know, you just flow. You just flow. It's just automatic reflex, right? But if you're just seeing this for the first time and you're just scratching your head, well, everybody, including me, do that. Like, what on earth is going on here? Oh man, I'm too old. This is, I can't do this anymore. It's too confusing, right? But no, it's just not, you're not doing it often enough. Just keep doing it over and over. You know, create all kinds of tasks, classes, and eventually other, other things later on, visual force pages, factory classes, your own applications, create 20 applications to do different kinds of stuff. And then by the time you, you're, get, you're, you're, you know, you're just going to be used to it. Okay. So don't sweat it. If you're confused, keep going, just keep going. You have to keep going and do it more and more and more and often enough. And without realizing it, you just, you just get it. It just clicks. Okay. So I'll see you on the next video. Boom, hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word. Watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.